Hey guys, this is Mike St. Jules here, and I am going to be showing you a walkthrough today of one of my tracks from the latest EP, and it's actually the main title, The First Man. It is out now on Colorize, which is a sub-label of Enhanced Music. It's under my MSJ alias. I've decided to kind of revive that alias after many years of it being uh, absent, and... Um, yeah, I've just been loving the progressive style at the moment. And I said, well, why not try to do, um, you know, try to relive the sound again under that alias. Um, still doing my trance stuff, but I really like um, showcasing more of a deeper side to myself. And um, over the last few years, I've been working with my buddy Prussian. Uh He's now my second pair of ears and eyes in my works. Um, so it is true about having two heads better than one. And uh, last summer... We were in the studio and uh, he just kind of vibed off off on the MIDI keyboards and some of the hardware that we used in the studio. And we were able to convert a lot of it to audio. So this why, uh, this this way it's actually easier to um, kind of run through the track here and show you what we've been using uh, for the track. Um, so just to kind of go over some of the sounds and elements, uh, we can quickly go through. Uh, it seems here that I've done some color coding. So... Uh, what we want to show you first is the, the drums. So I will place them here so you can kind of see what's going on. These are the automation clips. So I'm just selecting them now. So I'm kind of having this section soloed out. Everything else is muted, as you can see. So here we have our kick. And then we have other grooves here, uh, closed hats. Um, so I like to use different samples. I love sample magic. I still go to Vengeance once in a while. Uh, some of my own one shots and whatnot um, kind of uh, combine them into uh, a loop and just kind of save it for future reference and any other tracks that I want to add it. In this case, the drums are pretty minimal. As you can see here, there's about uh, four to five layers, uh, including a snare buildup. So you can see here. And here is where the drums start to filter up, as you can see here. And then over here, we have the buildup for the snares. And then once that rises all the way through, we're gonna get into the drop. So the drums are pretty much straightforward. Um, majority of them, except for the kick, is being bussed through um, drum bus is what I've created. Um, as you can see, I have different plugins for that. Um, right now, the villa uh, I like to use Valhalla Vintage Verb um, for room purposes, but it's off currently. I have Cytomic the Glue. I have uh, J37 Stereo from Waves, really, really good to kind of enrich the sound overall. Uh, just very, very minimal in terms of the touch. Don't want to add too much to something that's already been cleaned up in the mix down process. Uh, we have Fab Filter Saturn. Uh, still loving this. Uh, you know, I, it's just really more so for gentle saturation that I like to use it for. And we have Pro Q. I do have Pro Q 2 and 3, um, but I think with this, it's so easy just to quickly use. I'll use Pro Q 2 for mastering purposes, particularly because of the spectrum grab. Um, but this is just very, very simple EQ, just some boosts here. Um, so, so technically, you can call it additive EQ and reductive. Um, and then I just have um, a filter, basic fruity filter. Uh, to get the, you know, just to get to the point across really quick. I don't need to get anything too crazy in um, my filtering process. So uh, it, that's that for the drum bus. And then, you, you know, you, I kind of have some other things. Again, the kick has an EQ just to notch down the um, around 70 hertz for the kick because uh, there was so much boom there. If I can play that for you here. So... As you can see here, there's just a lot of boom. So I just try to try to roll off the kick a little bit to 40 hertz and 68.4 hertz for the lower end region so that that punch doesn't come too forcefully. And then I also have um, the rocket compressor. 
which is also good to use for, um, you know, just to get that really strong extra punch in the kick. So, yeah, just very, very minimal with that as well. So I'll turn these back on. The next section I'll show you uh, right now, just mute these out here, because I like to show you everything individually for the tracks, is the bass line. So Prussian kind of went into the studio with me and, you know, we were just vibing with different ideas and he came up with a, uh, with a bass line um, and it was just very simple. So it kind of stays straight for a while, but then when we get to the um, busier parts, I think there is one note that goes up. So I think it's actually over here. There we go. So very, very simple there. And let me see what we have for that one. So it's just an EQ. Nothing else to it. Uh, I do have bass layers that usually go to a bus also, but there's nothing here. If I do, what I like to do in the buses is just to have an overall high pass filter, low pass filter, anything to kind of work with all of the elements as one in, in unison in that case. Um, the next bit is some of the other sounds that we played off the keys. I'll just show you that. Here's just some additional automation clips. We have, again, filter cutoffs for ARPs. Uh, we have bell sounds. So I had to end up chopping them up and kind of putting them together. Um, we just kind of just did it as an audition and then we went back and I just kind of chopped things up in here and just placed them according to the track itself. And then uh, he came up with a, uh, sorry, Prussian came up with a piano solo, very, very minimal here. So what's really nice about that piano in particular is that it's um, just, it has like that spacey feel like you finally got out of the earth's atmosphere and you're just kind of overseeing the, the darkness out there and, you know, seeing the illumination of the moon. Um, the first man track is actually inspired from the movie that just came out recently with Ryan Gosling. And um, I've always had very nice little subliminal messages about space and time and that sci-fi feeling in my works and using the MSJ moniker is kind of this the same thing it's just that feeling that inspiration of you know space and NASA and all that stuff and just try to incorporate it into dance music I think that kind of imagery really helps um so it makes things different about about dance music as opposed to the occasional stuff that we hear now um so the next bit is Omnisphere's flute. I had a flute that I got from Omnisphere, so it actually just kind of incorporates here. Actually, I think it is a Nexus sound. Let me just quickly look for that one. Yep, the flute is from Nexus. My bad there. So that's that. And when you play them all together, here's another element actually before I do that. So it's one of the presets that we used off one of the keyboards there in the studio. So when you kind of play this bit here. Just gives it that some orchestrated vibe. And then we have um, an ARP sequence, um, which is in silent. So we just kind of worked the arpeggiator and uh, it's just based off some chords from the track itself. So it's, let me just get a little further into it here. So it rises in with the filter cut off. We also have a love filter, which is also free, uh, free bass plugin as well. 
So that is pretty much the main hook of the track. Uh, again, I use Pro-Q. Uh, I did a lot of notching here uh, just to get rid of um, some of that extra noise, that whistling noise that you want to kind of do a notch for. So it keeps things in phase this way. Uh, the, we have the Love Filter. Um, I don't use this too much, but it's cool. It's just another effects plugin that I like to use and uh, just something that kind of adds some kind of dynamics to the sound itself. Um, we have a regular fruity bass reverb. I think this is one of my more go-tos for reverb when I'm not using Valhalla stuff. Um, just very, very minimal in the wet. Um, some decay, uh, rolled off a lot of the low cut, a little bit of high cut to come up. Um, so this is actually version 20 to FL Studio. So uh, this is a modified version of the previous ones. Um, there's new um, features like speed and modulation. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's just kind of a couple of things there that I like to use in this, and it's just so quick to use. Um, and then we have the sidechain by Kickstart. And, uh, yeah, so that's that for the sounds and the synths here. And then we'll get further down here right now to um, effects-based stuff. Uh, I'm a very big fan of Blue Zone Corporation. I love a lot of the stuff that they put out. Um, and there were some Transformers-based sounds that I like to use as some sci-fi elements. So uh, I can play some for you here. Yeah, so just little pieces. So yeah, just um, stuff that I like to incorporate into the, uh, the track itself. And then I have one major atmosphere here. So that is playing throughout the track. And it's just have that, uh, that idea of space and time, that feeling in the background. Let me turn on these automation clips here so you can also see that. So that kind of just plays through. And then we kind of do some chopping up here halfway through just to get a better smoothing of the process in, in the sequence. So there's a little bit of a, of a sound in there too. It's um, kind of like, um, like, a, like a counter melody, I would say, for, for that. And it kind of just works out um, with the rest of the elements that are there. Um, we have a conceptualized idea that we worked on also for the pads. Right. So again, sci-fi feelings just to get that idea, uh, uh, just that, that, that presentation, that feeling of space. And we also have just some dirty sounds here, vinyl type sounds just to add some life, alien-like feelings to the track. And here is something that's a bit more interesting. Um, I got sampled from NASA somewhere. I got a recording, and I actually just used it. It's a countdown that I've used in previous tracks, but there's also the, 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 the blasters from the rocket that I used. Um, so we have some EQ again for that under Fab Filter. And we will play that here in a second. Let me just mute out the other sounds. So when this plays, let's make sure nothing else is playing at the moment so you can hear it. Here we are. Here's some contact with the test. Five, four, three, two, one. And we have liftoff in that case. And as it goes, we're just automating EQ. So that pipe, it's like a kind of a high pass on its own. See, that just kind of rolls off as it goes. So we don't have too much of that low end dirtiness when we get into the drop section of the track. Okay, so now I want to show you basically the track as a whole. Especially when we get to the drop section, so you can hear everything all at once. So let's get back to the grooves here so you can hear just a bit bits and pieces of it.
just get that feeling of the groove and everything. And then when we get to the breakdown, we have our piano pieces and all the atmospheric stuff. Piano has some Pro-Q, rolled off, rolled off about 5K on the high end. And we have the FabFilter Pro-C for compression, just very light. Everything's starting to build up into this point. We have our snare filters automating up along with volume. Then we're gonna have the vocals come in next. lift off. And those little atmospheric bits that I told you about earlier really helps give you that feeling of space. pretty much the record there. Um, so sometimes what I like to do for mastering, I like to uh, take a pre-master from the project and start a new one and have some bits and pieces there um, in the mastering chain. Uh, I still use uh, um, Ozone once in a while by Isotope, but now I'm using things like Onyx. If you're really getting a really, really clean mix down, you can just have something that gives you just a bit of touch as a polish to the record. Um, I like to use Oxford Inflator um, by Sonics. Uh, I think this is a really good tool to kind of just really, really bring up the sound a bit without having to, you know, have any distortion in place. It's really good. It saturates the sound just, just enough. Um, keep the effect at 100. Work that input just a bit. And I have the band split on. It really helps. Uh, and then... I have a FabFilter Pro Q on here. Um, so I just use one of the basic presets in this case uh, and just kind of readjusted the, where it's been placed. Uh, there's some stereo separation there as well. Um, so some boosts between one to two decibels in height there. Um, but if I need to do any final EQing, if I really want to get heavy in the mastering process, then I'll use uh, Pro Q2, uh, which gives me the enable to use spectrum grab and really, really fine tune anything that's phasing. Um, and then last but not least, we have um, the Invisible Limiter uh, by AOM. Uh, actually, Armin Van Buren recommended this to me. We had talked a couple of years back in Vegas, and um, I was just asking, what you know, what do you do in your mastering process? And he just tells me just a touch for the Invisible Limiter, not much. In this case, you see, you see here that it's all zero decibel. And then I'll use the inflator to push up any uh, anything if I want more volume, pretty much, and I'll just increase the input. Um, but just just before it gets to to uh, you know, you don't want it too mild uh, or get very hot in this case. So just keep it on just under zero decibels, and yeah, you got pretty much of a track there. Um, so this is it for the first man. Um, I really would love your comments and feedback regarding this. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Mike St. Jules. And you can also follow me on Facebook at Mike St. Jules Official. And I'm currently working on my website again. It's under construction, but soon it will be up. And yeah, like, um, like the video, subscribe and comment below. And uh, it'll be great to hear your feedback on this. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you later.
Yeah.